This preview brought to you by Harness Racing Victoria. Adam Hamilton joining you to take a look at uh, a neat and fascinating little eight race card at Melton's Tabcorp Park tonight. We've been so used to in recent weeks cards of uh, between 10 and 12 races but it's a little bit of a step back to tradition with a smaller program tonight and so much of the interest in this meeting will be in the middle stages of the card. Uh, races 6 and 7 uh, features the Trotters Free For All and also the Pacers Free For All. A couple of the real emerging stars of harness racing, not just in Victoria but in Australasia. Particularly Elegant Image in the Trotters Free For All and Bit Of Bliss in the Pacers Free For All. We'll talk uh, a lot more about those. Another uh, high highlight of tonight's program are the heats of the Battle of the Claimers series and we've seen horses come from all different parts of Australia including a tremendous Tasmanian influence through the heats largely from uh, the stables of one of their top trainers in Grant Hodges. We'll mention those as we go through the preview. But let's uh, get into the meeting now. We have got fixed odds markets uh, on those features in the middle of the card, the trotters and the paces free-for-alls, and we'll look at those in depth when we get to those respective races. We do start with uh, a trotters event and the opening race is scheduled for 6.42 and this is a race that I found a little bit difficult to sort out, largely because the best trotter in the race by a long, long way is Brief Glance. It wasn't that long ago that Brief Glance uh, beat Elegant Image in a Vic Bread Group 1 final. Since then, Brief Glance has had a lot of issues. We've barely seen this trotter at the races and what we have seen has been just uh, a mere shadow of the horse that we know Brief Glance can be. Still going to put it on top here. It's had the one run back from a break. It's got an absolute stack over these talent-wise and uh, it certainly looks very, very well graded. I think if we see anything like a glimpse of the best form from Brief Glance for trainer Alan Tubbs and driver Amy Tubbs, uh, Brief Glance should be a, a class above its rivals. Now, Gold Star Invasion is clearly my second selection in the race. Has been building up to a win this campaign. Hasn't got there, but a couple of good placings, then a luckless run, and ran third here, but had to change course a couple of times at a crucial stage and got a little bit rocky in its action late. Michael Stanley, uh, I'm sure, is going to have fun, some fun with this trotter along the way, and he has drawn nicely from the standing start in Barrier 4. For third, I'm putting in Michael Thomas. Um, a year and a half ago, this looked like being a budding star. Has had a couple of stable changes since. Now with David and Lisa Miles. And Michael Thomas, again, four runs back from a campaign. We've seen glimpses. Nowhere near its best form. But... Uh, there's been enough to say that at this level he could be competitive. He has drawn inside of the second line from the standing start, and that is uh, potentially uh, traffic issues. And then I'm putting in for fourth Kai Valley Rap, who's got the form on the board. This new partnership between Australia's premier driver, Chris Elford, almost 300 wins last season, and the king of trotting, Chris Lang, has certainly been beneficial on both fronts. Chris Elford taking the drive on the improving Kai Valley Rap. I don't think he's quite got the talent of a few others in this race, but his best form, he is in form, he's got good standing start record, and that's going to hold him in good stead if a few of the better credentialed horses don't run up to the best of their ability. So in the opening event, I put them in nine brief clants ahead of four, eight and five. Let's go to the second race. It is Heat 1 of the Battle of the Claimers series. And here we see the immediate impact and a very strong one of uh, the respected and very successful Tasmanian trainer in Grant Hodges. He's got both Sky Tower drawn barrier 6 and also Empty Envelope, who might be near enough to favourite and is probably the equal key runner in this race, one of uh, a couple of uh, interstate visitors who are going to be at the forefront of betting. Um, I'm actually going to put on top Cowboy Cadillac here. Now, this horse had shown good form in some nice races up there in Queensland. Um, recently made the transition down to Victoria and joined the Ross Sugar Stable. Now, Ross is coming off uh, his tremendous breakthrough season as a trainer in Victoria. We know how good he has been in South Australia, but 
boy, he had a tremendous uh, season last season uh, in partnership with son Greg in the sulky. This time, Zach Phillips takes the reins on Cowboy Cadillac for Ross Sugars. Now, I'm going on an each-way basis. This should be an each-way odds the field type race. Cowboy Cadillac has drawn inside the back row. We'll obviously need that little bit of luck from there. Empty envelope. Uh, I've just put in ahead of uh, the stablemate from Grant Hodges in Sky Tower for second. Empty Envelope has probably got form in slightly better races and, and on their best Tasmanian form, as, as much as I can line them up, Empty Envelope might have a slight edge. It's interesting also that Grant Hodges has elected to drive Empty Envelope, who is first up from a spell, whereas Sky Tower will be driven by the, the ex-Tasmanian, uh, now domiciled in Victoria, the talented young driver in Josh Duggan. Uh, Josh lost one of his friends down in Tassie during the week uh, in a car accident and has, uh, has certainly been driving uh, as a tribute in terrific form to him over the last couple of days. Sky Tower, I did pop in for third. That's Josh's drive. He has drawn a little bit wide but can certainly be competitive. Uh, he was one of Tassie's best open class paces a few years ago and maybe best of the rest, although I think he's a little space behind the others. Spot nine for trainer driver Lance Justice, drawn barrier four but does come into Barrier 3 with Mr Commitment being a scratching the emergency from Barrier 1. I've gone for the former Queenslander, Cowboy Cadillac, number 8, to beat 10, 6 and 4 in the first heat of the Battle of the Claimers, race 2. Third event tonight at Melton is the Battle of the Claimers second heat and here again Grant Hodges I think is a very very key player. This time I'm actually putting his runner on top. I'm going with Friday Lunch. Now Friday Lunch possesses terrific gate speed, has been racing in really good form down there in Tasmania and more importantly has the barrier draw in a relatively moderate race to use that gate speed and potentially control the race. So I'm going with number four Friday lunch on top, liking the gate speed, certainly drawn the best of the major players in this race. I'm putting in a real value runner here in number 10, Water Horse, in for second. This is a drop back in grade. Water Horse started this campaign with a barnstorming win and then has gone pick a, a, a form line of 6099. But the performances have been a little bit better than that form indicates and it's a drop back in grade for trainer driver or trainer Karen Manning. Alan Tormey taking the drive on this occasion. Water Horse driven sit sprint can finish strongly. Eliminator won three in a row in this sort of company, then stepped into a better race and had absolutely no luck. Held up at a crucial stage last week, just wasn't able to assert itself into the race at all. Dropping back to this sort of race despite the back row draw should be a major factor. And Mel Park Maestro, when he gets into this sort of company uh, and the fact that he does move down that one spot with uh, Mr Commitment coming out of Barrier 1 now, Mel Park Maestro, even though he finds it hard to win, can be competitive here. This time I am going with a Tassie runner Friday lunch with a fair bit of confidence too. Number four on top to beat number 10 Water Horse who is one of my value runners of the night. Next best nine and seven. Four to beat ten, nine and seven in race three. The Quaddy tonight starts on race four, and this is a good race. I'm very keen on one, though, Mr. 1-2. Formerly trained by uh, Emma Stewart and Clayton Tonkin in Victoria, had a stint up in New South Wales where perhaps didn't quite run up to the early potential it showed, and then only recently came back to the Emma Stewart and Clayton Tonkin stable. We spoke at length in the preview about Mr. 1-2 and uh, his good trial ahead of last week's run at Melton, and the run was uh, absolutely terrific. Should have gone close to winning, got a long way back, really had no luck at all, and look at the way that he finishes off the race. Uh, we'll go to Dan Malecki's call here. He's had to come three and four wide by himself from a mile back in the field. This is a, at least as strong, probably a stronger race than he's in tonight. He looks to be battling a little bit here, but I like the way he still hits the line. Here's the call. Into the straight. It's four metres in front of Give Us a Grin. Mr. 1-2 runs on its cheap tent. Give Us a Grin coming through. Cheap tent in front, drifting off the track, but it's clear. And 
Cheap Tent is going to get home. Good horse. Cheap Tent won it. It beat Give Us a Grin. I think Mr. One Two's run a slashing race, and it's in the photo for third with Time Lazira. Then Narrow Operative, Run Forest. Uh, well, for you heard Dan Malecki uh, capture that in his call. Mr. Run Two, Mr. One Two has won a, a slashing race. It was a leader-dominated race. Only one horse made ground, and he had to do all the bullocking work out three and four wide himself in the last lap. Michael Stanley, with this new association with the Emma Stewart and Clayton Tonkin stable, takes a drive. Uh, I think he... Uh, I originally had him as a value bet. He might be a little bit shorter odds than I expected. I'll make him an equal best bet of the night. I'm not really worried about the draw. I think it's an easier, easier race than he was in last week. And uh, he's, some of his key rivals uh, are drawn even worse than him. So, number seven, Mr. One-Two, on top, with a level of confidence. Indulgent is racing in ultra-consistent form. He doesn't really really have a weapon as such, but he's just ultra consistent and very, very tough. Came through a Breeders' Crown consolation race and ran an almighty effort on that occasion. Dropped back in grade, produced his typical toughness to win well at Horsham last time. I think Mr. One Two is a better horse than him, but Indulgent is ultra consistent and will make Mr. One Two earn the race. Give us a grin is racing in honest form, but does go to the back row this time. Barrier 10. And best of the rest, uh, the honest sit sprinter in Balisario has drawn nicely in Barrier 1. And if it can hold up in some sort of position for trainer driver Chris Elford, it can be uh, at least a place chance anyway. I'm not sure it'll be quite strong enough to upstage the likes of Mr. 1-2 and Indulgent. I'm going for Mr. 1-2 very confidently in the first leg. I think the only real danger is Indulgent from Barrier 6. Six, seven ahead of six, and then best of the rest numbers ten and one in race four, the first leg of the quaddy. Over to race five at uh, Melton tonight, and again this is uh, a good race. This is a very very open race. If you take if you're playing quaddies, I think it's virtually a field job. I think every runner has got some sort of chance in this race, and as you'll see when I give you uh, my suggested quaddy for the night, I'm going very very wide. Uh, as a result, I'm going to look for some value here. A runner that's first up from a spell, albeit drawn a little bit wide, is Al Arlington for the Jeff Webster stable. Jeff's doing the driving himself tonight. Al Arlington, last campaign, early in the preparation, was terrific in at least as strong a race as this, maybe even stronger on the Country Cup circuit. Uh, I like him as a value bet on the night. Expect maybe somewhere around that $8 mark, and I'll be having something on him each way. Now, Donegal Delight is a former Kiwi mare. She's found her niche over here, and that is being driven cold and saved for a late sprint. As a result, she needs luck. As a result, I don't like backing her when she's one of the favourites, but she's got an undeniable chance here. Better give it an interesting runner. Probably four to six weeks ago, Better Give It looked to be as good as any mare in Victoria. There's a little question mark on her form since. She was a certainty beaten in uh, the Mayor's Breeders' Crown Free for All three starts back and hasn't quite performed up to that effort since in two runs. She has drawn pretty nicely in Barrier 3 and has to be considered. It'll be interesting what tactics Gavin Lang engages from Barrier 3 with stylish Jasper, who can begin well, and also Born Again Sassy, my fourth selection drawn in Barrier 1. Born Again Sassy was really good in a Breeders' Crown qualifier, has been consistent since and has the gate speed, as mentioned, to use Barrier 1. But in an awfully hard race, a very open race, I'm going for the value in number 6, our Arlington, to beat 4, 3 and 1 in race 5, the second leg of the Quaddy. Well, now we get down to where the first of the two features tonight, and this one is for the Trotters, named after one of the greats of Australian trotting and true Roman. From memory, he won almost 80 races in his career. He was an absolute champion. Uh, in this case, it's more a race of up-and-coming trotters. Elegant image as we look at the fixed odds market. He's an odds-on favourite at $1.70, and it's largely because he was so impressive winning the Breeders' Crown Open Trot, first up from a break around three weeks ago at Melton. He sat outside of the leader, switched into another gear at the top of the straight, and won without being fully extended. He's a trotter who's always had an enormous amount of ability for Andy and Kate Gath. I'll talk more about him shortly. Kai Valley Blur, a rising star for the Chris Lang stable at $4.20. Mr Zion drawn inside of the back row to follow Elegant Image everywhere. First up from a spell. He trained off last campaign, but his, season, his form early in the season was very good. Earl of Mott's ultra-consistent, but... 
He, uh, he always is a little bit of a sitting shot for the others, and he may have to do the work outside of the leader tonight. He's at $6.50. And the former Norwegian trotter, Ridgehead Cahor, who's showing a little glimpse of his best form, is at $12. Well, let's talk more about Allingham Image. The first up win was tremendous. He should have the gate speed to lead them from barrier one here, and that should go a long way towards winning. He didn't show a whole lot of gate speed first up, but he didn't need to. They were happy to sort of control the race from outside of the leader, and he went on and won very well. He's a trotter who... Uh, he, uh, we're going to go back and have a look at this performance in, uh, in the Breeders' Crown Open Trot. It was three weeks ago. He's sitting outside uh, Earl of Mott here. He'd done a little bit of work, uh, elegant image, but oh, I think he wins this really impressively. Let's go to Dan's call. Intended on Stone I am struggling, but Elegant Image got clear from Earl of Mott, and Elegant Image is drawing away. Elegant Image, what a brilliant performance! First up from a spell and beat Earl of Mott. Third tendered on fourth Stone I am. Okay. He was a terrific young trotter. He's battled uh, injury issues right throughout uh, his career. Just little niggles, nothing major, but they've clearly hindered him making uh, the impact that he's got the potential to do in the big league. This could be his campaign. He's drawn barrier one. He's got the gate speed to use it. He's my bet of the night, elegant image. Short but sweet for me at the $1.70 fixed odds. Maybe he'll be a little bit better come race start time, but it does look his race for sure tonight. So I'm putting him on top. Number one elegant image for Kate and Andy Gath to beat number eight Mr Zion because I think Mr Zion, who's had a few trials in preparation for this, uh, I've put him in for third. He'll get the sit right in behind elegant image. Kai Valley Blur. Now, uh, Kai Valley Blur, Chris Lang Sr. told me about a year ago that he felt this American purchase had the potential to make a really nice open class, maybe even Grand Circuit Trotter. He, uh, he lost his way a little bit to earlier on this year, but he's hit back with three really good wins in a row, and he's got a really strong finishing burst. So I've just put him in for second ahead of Mr Zion. And then uh, Earl of Mott, who just doesn't know how to run a bad race, he'll be uh, boxing away, even if he's got to do the work. As usual, I've put him in for fourth. But elegant image, my bet of the night, number one, to beat number five, eight and four one five eight and four in the trotters free for all the true roman trotters free for all race six over to the paces free for all which is named after one of the great paces arguably the greatest of all time at least on his performances blacks are fake the uh, incredible inter-dominion dominator as he was through his career blacks are fake uh, free for all race seven and we're going to have a look at the fixed odds market here Bit of bliss. Wow. It's a dominant price, isn't it? $1.65 in a sprint race, 1,720 metres, and the fact that he is drawn outside of the back row. Bit of bliss. Still, he does pick himself on that performance we saw from him. I'm going to show you that replay shortly, but let's run you through the fixed odds market. Bit of bliss at $1.65. Broadway's best, uh, the former champion mare in the twilight of her career. She's $5.50 largely because she's drawn so well in barrier one and has the gate speed to use it. Mel Park Major, he'll be fitter for the slightly disappointing first up run against Bit of Bliss and Smoking Up a couple of weeks ago, but he does go to uh, the back row draw barrier 10 tonight. I'm Barney Rubble at $9. He led and beat Bit of Bliss two starts ago. Uh, finding the front is a key to his chances at $9. And Jack in flight, he's a pacer I've got a lot of time for, but it's a challenge for him second up from a break drawn out wide in barrier six. Bit of Bliss dominates the betting. And we're going to go back and um, I think we're going to go back and have a look at a bit of Bliss's performance two weeks ago in a free for all at Melton. He sat back in a race where Mel Park Major was in front, smoking up was outside of the leader. Now they dominated up front. It wasn't a strongly run race. Look at Bit of Bliss. He's still last and giving them a huge start here. I'm going to let Dan Malecki capture the call for you. Smoking up under pressure. In behind them to lose the track. Then came I'm Barney Rubble. It's Mel Park Major from Smoking Up. Into the straight, Mel Park Major. Smoking up the outside. Then to lose the track, Machu Crusader. Bitter Bliss is flying. He's come from last. Bitter Bliss blows them away. Bitter Bliss has won it. Smoking Up has run second. Third's close. Machu Crusader. Well, he's a very special horse. There's, uh, there's no question about that bit of bliss. And if he can stay sound, he's got the potential to match it with the very best on the Grand Circuit. On what we saw there, 
he really should just turn up and win tonight. It's an easier race because Smokin' Up's not there and Mel Park Major's drawn the back row. The horses off the front row, uh, I'm Barney Rubble, Jack in Flight, Broadway's Best being the best of them. They're not Grand Circuit horses. Bit of Bliss clearly is. And Mel Park Major, to be honest, at this stage of his career is, is not really a Grand Circuit horse anymore. Bit of Bliss, is he the new star of Victorian harness racing? Well, he's still got to get past Smokin' Up in the eyes of some. And also Caribbean Blast has got that man at the moment after his big season last term. But Bit of Bliss putting him on top. I'm going to put I'm Barney Rubble in for second, but if you're, uh, if you're putting him in your multiples, you'll be hoping that he can get across them early on. It'll be interesting what Chris Elford wants to do on Broadway's best, whether he does want to try for the all-the-way win. Mel Park Major in for third. He just may be better suited driven sit sprint at this stage of his career, particularly early on in his preparation like this. And Jack in flight, as I mentioned, I've got a lot of time for this horse, but he is going to need a lot of luck from Barrier 6, the way this race is going to be run. Bit of bliss, an absolute standout uh, for mine. Short but sweet, he should be winning. 11 ahead of 3, 10 and 6. Just while we're on Bit of Bliss and we've got the time, he's one of four Australian nominations for the New Zealand Trotting Cup to be run on the second Tuesday in November. And tab.com.au has got a market up already on the New Zealand Cup. Well done to the boys getting it up nice and early. It might surprise a lot of people that I'm the Mighty Quinn is not actually favourite to win the race. The uh, three-time Inter-Dominion winner is a $3.50 second favourite. That's despite confirmation yesterday from Gary Hall Sr. that he'd recovered from a spider bite and the flights had been booked to get on the Mighty Quinn over to New Zealand. He'll have a lead-up race in the Kaikoura Cup the day before the Melbourne Cup and then he'll go into the New Zealand Cup eight days later. The emerging star of New Zealand harness racing, Chris and me, heads the betting at $3. I'm the Mighty Quinn at $3.50. He races as the Mighty Quinn over there in New Zealand. Zealand. Terra to Love, the winner of the past New Zealand Cups at $4.20. Marsish has had good early support, the Hunter Cup winner at $9. Bit of Bliss, genuine doubt on whether he will go over to New Zealand. It seems unlikely at this stage at $11. Caribbean Blaster, intention from Andy Gath is to make the trip across from Australia. He went last year, he's a lot better horse this time round. And Suave Chewy Lombo, who races at Menangle tomorrow night, and beat XL Stride at Menangle last weekend is at $14. Owner Zach Cornell saying that he's keen to make the trip across for the New Zealand Cup. So it looks as though we could have unprecedented new, uh, Australian representation on the second Tuesday of November in the New Zealand Cup at Addington in Christchurch. Bit of bliss here at $11. You'll get to see him in action tonight. But as I said, I hasten to add, bet with caution there, Scotty Stewart saying it's very unlikely that he'll make the trip across the Tasman. Let's round out our preview of the Melton program tonight and it finishes up with the last of the three heats in this Battle of the Claimers series and it is for the claimers that don't have a price tag any higher than $12,000 on them. Uh, it's a series that's proven popular and uh, we've covered the first two qualifiers. Let's have a look at the last of them and uh, I'm going for Thirsty Mac here, a former Tasmanian pacer who's been over in Victoria for a while. He's been set for this series. He's first up from a break for trainer Adam Kelly Gavin Lang takes a drive. This is not an overly strong race for mine, and I'm going to put him on top. Got tremendous re respect for another one first up from a break in Braveheart Stride. New to the Emma Stewart and Clayton Tonkin stable, has been showing enough recently at the trials. Michael Stanley takes a drive as part of the new partnership. He is uh, the second selection for mine, Braveheart Stride. Mega Sam's drawn nicely and uh, could get himself into the mix there from Barrier 3. And next best, maybe number six, Watch me fella, but I've also got a little bit of respect for number seven, Jaden Castle, who showed up in a recent trial at Geelong. In the last, I'm going for ten to beat nine, three and six on a really good program of harness racing at Melton's Tabcor Park tonight. As mentioned, the highlights in those middle races, races six and seven for the trotters and pacers. Let's now have a look at my summary for the meeting. I've got uh, two best bets rather than a best bet and a value. Race four, number seven, Mr. 
1-2. You saw his replay. If he runs up to that performance again tonight, he'll be winning. And a similar story with Elegant Image. He was so good winning first up, and he's drawn nicely in barrier one. Race four, number seven, Mr. 1-2. Race six, number one, Elegant Image. My suggested quaddy tonight, in the first leg of the quaddy, I'm going to pop in Indulgent and also Mr. 1-2 in race four. Just that little bit of insurance with Indulgent, who is tough and ultra consistent. I told you that the second leg of the quaddy, in my mind, is very open, so I'm going super wide here. Numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 9, 10 and 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 9, 10 and 11. In race 6, which is for the Trotters, I'm going to pop in Elegant Image and Mr Zion, who will sit on his back, numbers 1 and 8, and coming home with a bit of bliss, one out in the last league, number 11. So that will cost you $30 for the full 100% to have a, have a crack at the quaddy tonight. First race at Melton coming up at 6.42. The eight races tonight. It'll be great to see some rising stars of harness racing Australasia wide in action, headed by Elegant Image and Bit of Bliss. Good luck on the punt if you're having a go tonight. This preview brought to you by Harness Racing Victoria.